Well, good uh, afternoon, good morning, or good evening. Uh, it's a one year delay, but I'm very happy to be able to uh, demonstrate uh, to you how to scan the median nerve. Uh, first, I will present you some slides and then we'll go to the, well, live, it's videotaped, but the live demonstration on how to uh, scan the median nerve. The median nerve is one of the most easy scannable nerves because it has a very superficial course and it makes it visible along a long tract. So it's ideal for ultrasound scanning. And uh, it's also one of the most investigated nerves because for instance, carpal tunnel syndrome is very uh, good visualizable with uh, the nerve ultrasound. And there are also numerous other conditions associated with abnormalities in the median nerve. So if you find any abnormalities proximally, don't forget to scan the entire nerve. As in every ultrasound protocol, it's always important to know your surroundings and it's not any different for the median nerve. If you look at this image, you may think you're in Paris, but if you look any further and you see also, also the Statue of Liberty, palm trees, then you maybe are not in Paris, but in Las Vegas. So always know where you're scanning. Uh, it's very important also when scanning the median nerve. When identifying the median nerve, it's important uh, to first look at it at the wrist. It's the most easily visualizable uh, place. And here you can find it between the tendons of the, of the flexor digitorum muscles and between the pisiform and scaphoid, scaphoid bone. Here you can see the median nerve in the middle of the screen with the two bones around it and between the tendons. The nerve is always recognizable as a honeycomb structure. And here you can also recognize the carpal ligament and here you see the honeycomb structure. When you image the median nerve at the wrist, you may also encounter this structure, this anatomic variation, which is a bifid median nerve, in which case there is a persistent artery which divides the nerves in two segments. Uh, you can use color Doppler to visualize this artery. And if you measure the median nerve, and you have a bifid structure, you should add the cross-sectional area of both segments. And usually when uh, applying reference values, you should add one millimeter to the cutoff value. When you visualize the medium nerve more proximately, it will make a C turn, which I will demonstrate you in a minute uh, in the live demo, but it will run a more deep course and it will run between the superficial flexor digitorum muscle and the profound digitorum flexor muscle. If you go even more proximal, then the median nerve will run a more superficial gorse again, and it will go to the surface between the two bellies of the pronatoterus muscle. And when we arrive in the upper arm, the most easily recognizable landmark is the brachial artery which is always next to the median nerve. And you can also identify it between the biceps and the brachial muscle. So those are the key landmarks to remember when scanning the median nerve. Um, well, then now we'll go to the demonstration of the median nerve. I will now perform a live demonstration of, on how to scan the median nerve with ultrasound. Uh, there are different ways to position the patient. Uh, in this case, I positioned the patient supine because I also want to visualize the median nerve in the upper arm. If you only want to perform investigation for carpal tunnel syndrome, the patient could sit as well and just lay his arm down. Uh, to start the scan, I will look for the nerve at the carpal tunnel, just proximal to it. Here you can see it very nicely. Uh, in the middle of the screen. Sometimes it can be difficult to visualize, but here you can see a nice honeycomb structure. If you doubt, if you have uh, visualized the nerve or that it are tendons, then you may tilt the probe a bit. And as you can see, 
the tendons will get dark very easily while the nerve keeps his honeycomb structure. You can also ask the patient to move his fingers and then you can see the tendons move while the nerve remains nicely in its original position. It's important to keep the probe perpendicular to the nerve to obtain an optimal image and uh, so you can evaluate the vesicles very nicely. I'll perform a measurement right now within the hyperechoic rim of the nerve. And here you can see a cross-sectional area of 10 millimeters squared, so that's normal in this case. Then I'll try to visualize the nerve more distally within the carpal tunnel. It can be a bit tricky sometimes because it will go deeper. So I will move my focus more deeper as well and tilt my probe. Here you can see the nerve lying a bit deeper within the carpal tunnel. And here it's not enlarged as well. But it's important to try to visualize the nerve more deeper, more distally in the carpal tunnel as well, because otherwise you may miss a nerve enlargement and so miss a carpal tunnel syndrome if you only perform the measurement right here at the proximal carpal tunnel. Then I'll follow the nerve more proximally. And there, let me move my focus again. There it will make a C turn. As you can see in the screen, I move a little bit backwards. It longs along a C turn tract and it will run between the superficial flexodigitorum muscle and the profound flexodigitorum muscle. And you can measure the nerve in the forearm as well. Again, within the hyperechoic rim. And here it has a surface of 8.6 millimeters squared, so that's normal as well. If you should see a profound enlargement of the nerve on this uh, side, then you should try to image the nerve more proximally as well, because then potentially there's other nerve disease than carpal tunnel syndrome causing uh, the nerve enlargement, for instance, a hereditary polyneuropathy or a CIDP. So I'll follow the nerve more proximately in the arm, still in the forearm between the superficial and profound flexor digitorum muscles. Let me adjust the depth because the nerve will have a less superficial position. And here we can f follow the nerve all the way into the depth. And then over here, it will go to the surface again, between the two bellies of the pronator teres muscle. And here at the elbow, you see one of the main landmarks, which will help you to identify the median nerve. And it's the brachial artery. You can see it pulsate, but with color Doppler, it gets even more clear. And right next to it is the median nerve. I'll adjust the depth of the screen again because it has a more superficial course. And here the nerve is positioned right next to the brachial artery all the way along the upper arm. So here I can perform a measurement of cross-sectional area as well. And this is a spot where, for instance, in CRDP you can find profound nerve enlargement. But in this case, that's not the case. Uh, normal cross-sectional area of 9.6 millimeters. Let me follow it just a little bit more proximally. And then I'll go back. And as you can see, 
the median nerve is a nerve you can really nicely follow along a very long tract in the arm all the way back to the carpal tunnel. And here it will make the C turn again. And here we arrived just proximal of the carpal tunnel. So that's it. A quick guide how to scan the median nerve. Thanks a lot.